Camp Tiger, written by Susan Choi, illustrated by John Bracco. Every year, my mom and dad and brother and I go camping at Mountain Pond. We drive a long time on the highway and then a long time on roads that zigzag until we're on a road that just, that's just dirt and rocks. The pine trees scrape the sides of our car. I think we're lost. And then the road zags and there's Mountain Pond, like a mirror in the trees. It's September, the end of the summer. As soon as we get back from camping, we go back to school. My brother's starting fourth grade and I'm starting first grade. I don't want to be a first grader. I like kindergarten. I like choice time and building with blocks. I hope our camping trip never ends. We have a campsite on the far side of the pond with the big mountain starting behind it. My parents both really like it. It's so beautiful, they say, and so quiet. We take our stuff out of the car and talk about all the things we'll see. The eagle fishing for its dinner in the pond, the salamander with red spots on its back, and the chipmunks that come to steal food while we sit by our campsite. The air feels cool. I find a red leaf on the ground. While we're working on the tent, everything gets really still. My mom puts out her hand in that way that means don't move and don't talk. A tiger steps silently out of the woods and stands next to the stone fireplace. The tiger is orange with black stripes and has a stern face and big heavy paws. But it seems smaller than a tiger should be. It's still big, like our neighbor's German shepherd that scares me sometimes on the sidewalk. But for a tiger, it's small. It doesn't scare me. It also looks thin and it talks. Do you have an extra tent? Asked the tiger. I have a cave, but I still feel cold. I know that we do. It's a two person tent that we bought as a place for me and my brother to play in if it rains. Yes, my dad finally says, while my mom stares at him. We'll set it up when we finish with this one. We set up the two tents in silence. I notice that while we're working, the tiger starts acting like a cat, a more regular cat. He sits down and grooms himself slowly especially cleaning his paws. I don't see claws. He must have them pulled in. I think he's cleaning himself to make us feel more comfortable with him. It works. My mom keeps looking over at him and I can tell that she thinks he's beautiful. When we're done, my dad holds out his arm in that goofy way of his that means voila. Can you unzip it for me? The tiger asks. I look at his huge, heavy paws. My dad does, and the tiger lowers his head and steps in carefully. I follow before my parents can stop me. Zip us in, please, I call back. You can zip it yourself, my mom says. Don't snag the fabric. All summer, things my mom used to do for me, like make my bed in the morning or fold up my clothes, have become things that I have to do myself. I can do them, but I wish she would do them. This time though, I zip the tent quickly before she can make me come out. Inside the tent, the tiger lies down so he's shaped like a C and puts his head on his paws. I wrap my arms around him and bury my face in his fur. He smells like sunshine and pine needles. Tigers live in Africa, I tell him. Not Africa, Asia, he says. This isn't Africa or Asia, I tell him. No, sighs the tiger. All weekend, the tiger stays with us. When we hike on the trail, he walks first and his paws make no sound. 
he knows an overlook we'd never found before, where we can see the top of the green mountain stretching away. He's cautious around water, but he comes with us in our canoe. He sits very still, staring out at the shore. I barely have to reach down to trail my hand in the water. The canoe's riding low, my dad says, because of the weight of the tiger, I guess. We paddle slowly so we won't tip over. You've grown too, my mom says. At the fishing spot, my brother catches a pumpkin seed fish right away, which is what always happens. I don't want a fish, I say, sitting next to the tiger. No one makes me. But after a while, I get up and put bait on my hook. I hate fish, I say, as I cast. I love fish, says the tiger. I'll eat any fish that you catch. I almost never catch any, I tell him. But today I catch one. Just big enough to keep, says my dad when he measures. I'll eat it raw, says the tiger. I like to eat the whole thing and feel its tail swish around in my stomach. Ugh, we all say, but we're laughing. We never see other people. My mom says it's because it's late in the season. Even the park ranger never comes by. Our last night, my brother and I get to stay up extra late in the camp chairs and watch the fire until it dies out. I can see the tiger's eyes in the darkness, like the very last embers. I wanna look for shooting stars, I say. I wanna go in the canoe in the dark and look up at the stars. No one seems to hear but the tiger. I'll take you, he says. The tiger pushes his paws through the sparkling black water instead of using a paddle. I steer, which I was never good at, except now I steer really well. I see the stars shining deep in the water and our canoe gliding high in the sky. And then we're back and my mom and dad lift me into our tent, not the tigers, but I'm too tired to stop them. The next morning, the tiger is gone. He didn't say goodbye, I say. It's windy and cold, and that makes my eyes run and my throat feel thick, like I have a lump there. When my mom tries to give me oatmeal, I push it away. It's a wild animal, my dad says. It had to go back where it came from. You can go say goodbye to the lake, says my mom. I sit down by the water and put my head on my knees so that my kneecaps press against my eyeballs. I hear my brother coming over to make fun of me, but instead he just sits down nearby. Neither one of us says anything. Leaves fly off the trees as we drive back down out of the mountains. It's fall, says my mom. That means it'll be cold, I say. I think of the tiger shivering in his cave. When we get home that night, I draw the tiger exactly the way he looked. I'm going to take it to show my new teacher. Time for bed, my mom says, but I get her to give me five more minutes. I want to finish my picture before I forget. The end.